Hello everybody, I hope everyone is staying home and staying safe. Now had the school not been closed this week, I would have used our assembly time to mark a very important day in history, most specifically in Holocaust history. Now on the 15th of April 1945, the British army entered Bergen-Belsen concentration camp and there they liberated it from the Nazis. Now the 15th of April 2020 marks the 75th anniversary of that liberation. This date is important because we remember all of the people that died in Bergen-Belsen, actually all of the Jewish people that died in the Holocaust, so six million Jewish people, but it's also a day to remember and celebrate the actions of the British soldiers that entered that camp and their heroic actions. As you can see from the slide, um, the British liberation on the 15th of April 1945, when they entered, they found 53,000 prisoners, the majority of whom were emaciated and suffering for lot from lots of different various diseases. On the 4th of March this year, myself and three sixth formers were able to go and visit Bergen-Belsen. Now Bergen-Belsen was unlike some of the camps that you would have learnt about, especially if you're in year nine at the moment and you would have researched places like Auschwitz-Birkenau where there was the big gas chambers. Bergen-Belsen was very different. There was no gas there. People died through starvation, through malnutrition, but the disease was what killed the majority of people. A disease called typhus. Now when the British liberated that camp, when they arrived, there were thousands upon thousands of dead bodies that had just been left. When the Nazis ran away or the Nazis were arrested, they hadn't had time to do anything with these dead bodies and they were piled up. Now when we went and visited Bergen-Belsen, you will find these huge mass graves and you will see it on the slide. When you listen to survivor testimonies, lots of the survivors from Bergen-Belsen had actually come from Auschwitz where they had witnessed how structured and organised that camp was. Bergen-Belsen was chaos. When people got there, there was no structure, there were dead bodies laying around, but the main problem was this typhus. Now Bergen-Belsen has a very interesting past and as you can see from the table, Bergen-Belsen was actually started in 1935 as an army construction workers camp. It then transformed throughout the war. So obviously we all know that in 1939 the war breaks out. And from 1940 to 1943, Bergen-Belsen was used as a prisoner of war camp. Majority of the prisoners of war were from Soviet Union. As the war progresses, the importance of Bergen-Belsen to the Nazis and its uses changes. As you can see from the table, from 1944, it's used as a men and women's concentration camp. After that, from 1945 to 1950, the camp existed as a displaced persons camp. This was where Jewish people who were unable to return to their homes, lots of people who had no families left, Lots of people who had no houses and no homes to go back to found themselves by themselves in the camp where they had been sent by the Nazis. They then there set up life in this displaced persons camp from 1945 to 1950. And actually the camp transformed. Now this displaced persons camp had schools, it had theatres. It was a way to really rebuild that Jewish religion for these people that had had it stripped away from them. Now one of the most emotional things for me when I went and visited Bergen-Belsen was seeing the memorial for Anne Frank. Now lots of you will be aware of who Anne Frank was. For those of you that don't know who Anne Frank is, Anne Frank was a Jew who hid in Amsterdam for a long period of time. There she wrote a diary and this diary you can still buy now and you can read. And as a child I read this diary and that's really I think, why I became a history teacher. Now Anne Frank ended up in Bergen-Belsen with her sister. Both her sister and Anne Frank died of typhus. And when you go and visit Bergen-Belsen, there is a memorial. Obviously we don't know what happened to their bodies, we don't know where they lay, but we know that they died there. The next person I'd like to talk about in regards to Bergen-Belsen is Rudi Oppenheimer. 
Now, two years ago, Rudy visited Dover Christchurch Academy. And as you can see there, there's a picture of myself with Rudy. When Rudy visited Dover Christchurch Academy, he spoke about his experiences at Bergen Belson, where him, his brother, and his parents ended up. They had all ended up in Auschwitz, and like a lot of people had ended up in Bergen Belsen following this. Now, unfortunately, Rudy's parents died in Bergen Belsen. And from the slide, you can see there's a memorial for him, for his mother and his father. Unfortunately, Rudy Oppenheimer died last year. And I think Rudy's story is really important to remember. Um, when we're looking at the history of Bergen Belsen and his brother wrote a book and it's in our school library so when we are back at school it would be good for you to read that and it really ex explains the history of Bergen Belsen and actually what this family went through. Now the last slide I want us to look at is from Susan Pollock. Susan Pollock is one of the last living Holocaust survivors. I was lucky enough to meet her about six years ago. She had endured Auschwitz-Birkenau and actually was liberated at Bergen-Belsen. And as you can see from the slide, she says the conditions in Belsen were horrific beyond belief and many of those liberated died shortly after that day. I will never forget the kindness of the British soldier who picked me up off the ground, put me on a stretcher. He was a beacon of light in an uncertain future. This marked the beginning of a new life. It was because of people like him and so many others that I survived and I'm able to share my testimony. I'm proud to call Britain my home and I'm forever grateful. I wanted to leave this lesson on Susan Pollock's testimony because this is a British story. This is British history. British soldiers liberated this camp. So I want you to think about what I said in January in your assembly when it marked Holocaust Memorial Day. You all have a voice. You're all able to stand up for what you believe in. But use this time throughout this week to think about the Holocaust, the people that died, but also the heroes on the 15th of April, those British soldiers and what they saw and how they helped people. Thank you. I stay safe and stay home. Bye.